Okay. Okay. Um, today, because it's so hard to get uh, speakers, right? So I have to speak. So today I'm going to talk about PHP annotations. Uh, something about myself. Uh, I think most of you know me, but never mind. Uh, my name is Zion. I'm one of the organizers for the PHP Meetup as well as PHP Conference Asia. Um, I'm from Singapore. I uh, born and bred here. That's why my website is zion.sg. I'm currently working as a freelance web developer, also developing mobile apps for my client. So Java, Swift, Objective-C, PHP, JavaScript, uh, HTML, CSS, blah, 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 and yeah. So if you want to find out more about me, you can go to zion.sg and uh, find out. <coughs> so to the top proper, uh, just a show of hands, how many of you know what PHP unit is? Just a show of hands. One, two, three, okay, right? Four, five, six, okay, good. Okay, so my next slide is not wasted. Okay, so PHP unit uh, is at version A right now. It is a unit testing framework that is designed for the PHP programming language, currently at 7.3.1, .1, designed by Sebastian Birdman. Very nice face here. Uh, we had the honor of him speaking at our PHP conference last year and he conducted a one-day workshop on PHP unit. It was very good. He based it off a board game that he usually plays and uh, taught us how to uh, write tests for it. So unit testing is a level of software testing so that when you write, make changes to a software, you want to make sure that nothing else breaks. So for example, let's say you wrote uh, a function to check whether an email is valid. And somehow along the line, one of the developers decided, let me change the validation algorithm. And you want to make sure that he did not break anything. So you run the test, you run the unit test. And the unit test will actually check through all the test cases and check that, okay, uh, the expected behavior is still correct. Okay, so this is the typical directory structure. So over here, you have your typical uh, folder. Uh, it's installed by Composer uh, to install the dependencies. PHP unit.xml is the configuration. Normally, your PHP files, your application will be here under PSR4, a source folder, the namespace, and uh, the files. And all your tests will under, sit under the same namespace demo, and the files will be suffixed with the word test. So for PHP unit, it will only run through those files that end with the word test. So app test.php, email test, test.php. Okay, this is a sample code. Now, if you go to the PHP unit website, phpunit.de, uh, you'll find some sample code here. This is the sample code from there. So she starts off by showing, okay, let's say we have an email class to encapsulate an email. So the, um, the instance constructor is disabled, it's set to private. So you can only create a new instance of the email from a static function called from string, which you pass in the email. Uh, there's a magic method called underscore underscore. This is, this is two underscores. Uh. Underscore underscore to string. So when I try to print out an object instance, okay, it will print out actually the email. Okay, that means when I try to cast the instance to a string. This is what happens. This magic method will be called. And there's a private function that actually runs the validator. So over here, you find that when I try to create email, they will run this validator function to check whether the email is valid. Uh, they'll use this uh, PHP method called filter underscore var. And uh, you'll use this filter. If the email is not valid, you will throw an invalid argument exception. So this is your email class. This is your normal PHP code. So uh, how uh, PHP unit test code looks like? Oops. Oops. Mm, okay, good. Uh, this is how the PHP unit test code looks like. First thing, the class will be the name of the class that you want to test, suffix with the word test. And you extend PHP unit frame word slash test case. Okay, the PHP unit will actually run through all the public functions that start with the word test. Okay. 
Okay. If your if you have a public function called public function hello world, you will not run it. You will not run it. You will only run those public methods that start with the word test. So here we have three tests. First test is if I use the static method from the email class to create an object. Does it create me an object of the email class? So whether it's an instance of the email class. So this test test whether the static method returns me the correct type. Second test, you try to pass it an uh, invalid email. Okay? Invalid email, there's no domain in here. And I expect the exception to be caught. Third test, whether the test can be used as a string. So assert equals, I try to use, I create an instance of an email class. And when I output, I expect the value, the output to be the same as the email. So if I were to run this test, all test pass, you will see three dots. One dot, two dot, three dots, because there are three tests. And you tell me, oh, everything is fine. So uh, your developer did not break anything. But if you have failed tests, okay, you will see three characters, one dot and two s. One dot two s means one test pass, the other two test fail. So let's look at what's the. Uh, there are two failures. Uh, this is the name of the class, and this is the name of the method. So it is very important that you name your test method nicely. So actually, you know what it tests for la. It can be as long as you want. So it will tell you first test fail because the invalid argument exception was not thrown. So probably your developer changed the validation algorithm. As long as the character add right, that means it's a valid email, which is wrong, right? Okay. Second one, probably you changed the string somehow. So when I try to print the instance, instead of user at example.com, I print test user at example.com. So wrong. So this test fails. And today, it's not supposed to be an introduction to PHP unit. Today, I'm going to talk about PHP unit annotations. So annotations is basically uh, when you use when you comment when you put in comments uh, and then you put an at sign. So you have some code or some program that will run through all these annotations starting with the the at sign and then do some special behavior. So just now we had this test. We had this uh, email test, which is a PHP unit test, and this function test that if I pass it an uh, invalid email, it will throw an exception. I expect an exception, invalid argument exception class to be thrown. This can be re rewritten using PHP annotations like so. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Instead of Expect exception, I can put a annotation like so. Expected exception, invalid argument exception. So these two things, these two pieces of code works exactly the same. Okay. Now, uh, you, you can actually have uh, more variations. So instead of just checking on uh, the class of the exception, right, I can check for an exception code or an exception message. So over here, supposing I have some piece of code, I have some test, I want to test that my code, when it does something wrong, it will throw a class uh, exception of the inst uh, type, my exception. The message should be some message and the code will be 404. So this is how I can tell PHP you need to look out for these things. So instead of it being inside the code, it's under annotations. This is a uh, comment block. A dot block must start with a slash, then two asterisks and end with an asterisk and a slash. If you only have a one asterisk over here, you will not work. Okay, so this, this is what we call a doc block or documentation block for short. Now, you're saying, uh, what if I have a method, but uh, I, I'm not very sure of how the exact message will be like, but it follows a certain pattern. Mm. So we can use regular expressions. So regular expressions is basically use some pattern to match a string. So in this case, I say that um, I 
want to check that when an error happens, my method, my class will throw an exception of type my exception. And the pattern will be start with argument, some number, slash d plus means some number, cannot be a or n, some word. So in this case, this example shows argument 2 cannot be an integer. If I have another function and it throws argument 5 cannot be a string, this will also match. This will also work. So this is one using regular expression. So this is how, uh, so this group talks about the expected exception, code, message, and message regular expression annotations. There are currently 31 annotations in PHP Unit 8. Okay, obviously I'm not going to cover everything. So today I'm going to cover only about 11 annotations put into three categories. This is the first category. And the next category is a group, a ticket, a small, at medium and at large. So this is how we will use it. This is a PHP unit test class. Okay, we have two methods, test something, test something else. So we can actually have the annotation, a group, specification, a ticket. A ticket is an alias for a group. It is just another name of a, uh, for a group. So you could say that, okay, um, our document that actually this test uh, belong to this specification from this client. Uh, but this test, like the bottom one, it belongs to this Jira bug or something like that. So in PHP unit, how do we actually test certain tests on it? We don't run through all the 500,000 tests. We only want to run all the tests uh, belonging to regression. So in this case, from the command line, we can run PHP unit dash dash group which is a group option and specify the name of the group that we want to run so this command will only run those tests marked with a group regression so this test will not be run okay this is one way so you can specify the groups that you want to run via command line or via the php unit configuration which is this one so uh, something interesting from Sebastian, uh, why is someone pointed out, uh, why do you use SML for configuration? So many other people are using JSON, right? He said no, JSON is useful for data communication, but it's not good for configuration mm -hmm. because uh, it's not uh, explicit enough. So he prefers to use SML for configuration. So in this case, this is the default PHP unit configuration. And this is how you will specify, I only run, I only want to run those tests belonging to the regression group. Include. Now, this one will only run those tests belonging to the regression group. All other tests will be skipped. If you want to exclude, then you use exclude. Okay? Uh, now, I'm going to talk about small, medium, large. Okay, let me see where I can put this. Okay, you notice that there is a enforced time limit because it's true. For these next three annotations that I'm going to talk about, this needs to be passing either via the configuration or via the command line. And so some default values. So at small, at medium, at large, allows you to test whether your functions take more than a certain time. So the default values is uh, if you take it as small, um, the test will fail if it takes more than one second. If you take it as at medium, uh, by default if it runs more than 10 seconds, the test will fail. And the time out for large test is 60 seconds. Okay? The default time out for PHP scripts, if you don't change anything, is 30 seconds. So normally if your PHP script runs more than 30 seconds, right, you get a time out and then you see some error on your website. So this is sample. I have, uh, supposing I have an app class and I have some function that takes very long to run. Supposing it takes two seconds to run or something like that. Now this is the test class, okay, that tests this method. So in this case, I have the annotation at small. Okay, I'll just instantiate and then I'll just assert that uh, it returns true, something like that. 
Okay? If I were to run it, uh, this will actually fail. Hmm. Okay. <coughs> so the test we mark as risky. Okay, risky, not very, very fair. Lah. Okay, risky. So actually there are two risky tests. First thing, execution aborted after one second. You uh the code itself actually takes two seconds to run. There was a slip two over there, but PHP only only ran for one second. After one second, you bought it and say that this test failed because you mark it with a at small annotation. The second one is this test did not perform any assertions. Okay. You look at this, it came here, it took more than one second, it aborted. So it never came to this statement. So this test method in the eyes of PHP unit is you did not run any assertion at all. So this is a risky test. This is like empty test to me. So that's why there were two warnings. Now there's a caveat to using at small, at medium, at, at large. Okay, the caveat is uh, it only works on Linux. Why? To use the annotation at small, at medium, and at large, right, you need to install PHP Invoker in your composer.json. So composer.json is where you can specify what dependencies your PHP application have. Um, and PHP Invoker actually requires the process control extension. So I can't run this on my Windows laptop. Okay, it only runs Linux. I'm not quite sure about Mac because Mac is a kind of like illegitimate uh, version of Linux. So I don't quite sure about Mac. Okay, so but it only runs on Linux. Uh, so I can't run this on Windows. So I can't run those tests on Windows. Now, this is the second group. So we cover a group, a ticket at small, at medium, and at large. And the uh, final group, interesting, <coughs> is called Data Provider and Test Swift. So as I say, uh, we are very honored to have uh, Sebastian Birdman, the creator of PHP Unit, to conduct a PHP Unit workshop for us last year. Uh, he shared a very interesting story about data provider. He said he was at the conference. Then after that, uh, a developer came up to him. I got scolded by my manager. So Sebastian asked, why? Well, how can you got scolded? You know, my manager actually, I think he was working for a bank. The manager actually went to spend a lot of money to hire those data science, data analysis, analysis right, to come up, out with 1,000 over data sets for him to test with, to test whether the code is running fine. So uh, the developer, as a new developer, he just read the CSC, CSV file, comma separated values file, and then ran all the 1,000 over data sets. But because it was just one method, so it was only one dot. Okay, in the output, only one dot. So the manager say, I spent so much money, I get all this data analysis, and then 1,000 over data sets, and then you show me one dot. You only run one test, is it? You only run one data set, is it? You want to cheat my money, is it? So, okay, the developer, you yeah, never mind, I go back. So the developer went to write a script, and then uh, to generate a class, that means when you press enter, right, to run the script, right, you generate a PHP unit test case class that's 1,000 over methods one method for each data set in the Excel file. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, everyone else. Now, hey, which I don't know, uh, I was in Germany, I think. So now the manager, right, you see 1,000 dots. Wow, yes, manager very happy, but the developer is not happy. Okay, so that's the story behind data provider. Okay, uh, so this is how you will use data provider. Now, uh, data provider is good when your test your way of testing is always the same. So over here, I have a test function. Test at, I take in three parameters, A, B, and expected. So I check that if I add these two values, I will get this expected value, things like that. Okay? But I want to run it through probably 1,000 over data sets. I'm not going to run 1,000 methods and run and actually copy and paste the same code over again 1,000 times. So what the best thing did was, she provided a data provider annotation, at data provider. So over here, I can actually uh, give the name of the function that provide data sets. Over here, addition provider, addition provider, you will return an array of arrays. So each element actually has the key will be the name of the data set, so that when there's an error, right, you actually show this one. And <coughs> you have an array of values. 
and the number will actually correspond to here. Your test method expects three arguments, so each data set will have three values. First one corresponds to the first one, second to the second, the last one to the last one. So if you look at the last one, one plus one, the values one, one, three. So A will be one, B will be one, and expected will be three. So this one tests whether three equals to one plus one. So obviously the last test case will fail. So what will happen if you run this test? You will see this. There were four data sets. There were four data sets, okay? And we, the first three data sets passed, three dots, and the last one failed. So it says that data test, this is the name of the test function test set, with data set one plus one, that is the name of the data set, what are the values? One, one, three, field. So field asserting that two is identical to three. Okay, let's look at it again. Data set one plus one, values one, one, three, field. <coughs> so in this case, you can actually use a method to actually read from a CSV file or Excel file or anything, and then actually uh, return an array of arrays. If you find this is a bit uh, messy, Okay, uh, I don't want to spread my things over two methods. It's uh, too messy for me. What if I have other test methods? It will make my code organization a bit messy. Don't worry, uh, there's still a test with. So what uh, Sebastian provided is this one. Instead of data provider, instead of having another method that provides the data sets, it actually, you can actually use a test with annotation and you just provide your data sets here. So this is the name of the data set, uh, actually the first input, first argument, and this is the second argument. And this is function, it has two parameters. First parameter is input, second parameter is expected length. So if you have two, you have, you have two parameters, you will have two arguments. So here over here, we have two data sets. If you use a JSON object over here, PHP unit will automatically convert it into an associative array, like using JSON decode. So in this case, uh, I will have an array of two keys, day and conditions. The value for day will be Monday, the value for conditions will be sunny. So uh, this function just tests that it has the two array keys, day and condition, that's all. And so today, I said that uh, we actually have 31 PHP unit annotations, and we cover only uh, 11 of it. Hope this will pick your interest and you can go back and find out more. There's still a lot uh, after, after class, backup globals, covers, preserve global state, run tests in uh, separate processors, things like that, users, or covers nothing. Okay, and yeah, and that is all. Any questions? Two annotations that test and test dots. What is two? Uh, good question. I think this one um now. The test uh, yes. Ah. <laughs> okay. Uh, just want to mention that PHP unit will only run through those oh. tests with those tests those methods that start with the word test, but suppose you don't like. Ah, I, 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 want, I want to call my uh, test methods uh, ABC something something, ABC something something. So in this case, how do you mark, tell PHP unit that this is a test function that it runs PHP unit to run through? You mark it with the annotation at test. That's it. That's it. Ah, actually, that's a lot. Okay, and that's it. Okay, thank you very much.